ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll do it. Several of the most important cattle trails in Texas led to the railroad shipping point known as Trail City. It was a turbulent town that attracted outlaws and gamblers as well as cowmen. Toto, the friend of the Lone Ranger, bought supplies in Trail City. And when he rejoined his masked friend in the camp outside of town, the Indian told about a man who frequented the Red Dog Cafe. Him gunman, Kimasabi. Everyone call him Sarsaparilla Kid. Cause him drink only Sarsaparilla. Well, why did you call him a gunman, Toto? Well, him wear two guns. Oh. And people say him sit alone in cafe for past few days, waiting for man, him want to kill. Does he look like a killer? No. Oh, him young, good looking. Kimasabi, him doctor. Well, how do you know he's a doctor? Well, me see where him tie horse at hitch rail. Yeah. Me tie scout alongside, then take quick look in saddlebags. <laughs> you certainly were curious. Oh, uh, what did you find in the saddlebag? And now you curious. Yes, <laughs> I admit it. Uh, well, me find bag of doctor's tools and medicine. And paper that say him finish medical school in the East. Did you see the man's name on it? Ah. Uh. It's say James Hubbard. I wonder, Tonto, why a man who took the doctor's oath to save human life is prepared to turn killer. Me wonder same thing. Tonto, you said Dr. Hubbard spent the last few days in the cafe. That what me hear. Do you know if he's there evenings? Ah, him there all time, from morn till cafe close. All right, Tonto, we'll go there tonight. That evening, soon after dark, the Lone Ranger and Tonto started for town. Meanwhile, the Red Dog Cafe was crowded with cowboys whose herds had been brought to Trail City for shipment by railroad. Young Dr. Hubbard sat alone at a table in the rear, a bottle of sarsaparilla, the only soft drink of that time, in front of him. His eyes were fixed on the batwing doors at the street entrance until an old man sweeping the floor came close to the table and said, Mister, I heard you've been asking about a man named... John Thorpe. Yes, I have. Why? Uh, for five dollars, I'll tell you where he is. All right. Here's your money. Where is he? He's camped about a half a mile east of town. He got there this afternoon and uh, set up his tent. 
is Tent. Yep. He's a preacher. Well, then he's the wrong man. The John Thorpe I'm waiting for is one of the toughest cattle barons in Texas. He makes his own laws and lives by the rope and gun. He should be here with the cattle herd in a few days. Uh, how long is it since you heard about him? About ten years. Uh, he's the same man. Thorpe used to be what you said, but about ten years ago, something happened that uh, changed him. Uh, what happened? I don't know. But for ten years, he's been traveling around holding revival meetings near cow towns like this. His daughter travels with him. Her name is Jane. Jane? Oh, a handsome girl. About your age. Hmm. Is Thorpe a tall man who walks with a slight limp? Yep. He's got a bullet scar on his neck. That's the man. He set up a big tent and aims to start his revival meetings tomorrow night. He calls himself Brother John now, and he preaches some powerful sermons against lynching and gunfighting. Brother John. I don't suppose he carries a gun anymore. Nope. He don't need a gun to defend himself. Nobody would shoot a sky pilot. Hmm. I, I said nobody would shoot a sky pilot. I heard you. Not even a hot-headed gun slick like Lightning Joe Crane. Who's he? And he's foreman of the Box O outfit, which just bedded down a herd of cattle outside of town. <laughs> last year... What happened last year? Lightning Joe was in town during the cattle loading season, and Brother John was here at the same time. <laughs> Lightning Joe started raising a ruckus, and Brother John disarmed him and threw him out of the tent. <laughs> Never in all my life did I see a man as howling mad as Lightning Joe. <laughs> That preacher sure has nerve. I wonder. As I told you, mister, no one would shoot a sky pilot like Brother John. You'd better get on with your sweeping. I want to think. Yeah, yeah, better get on with the sweeping. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Toto drew rein and dismounted in the darkness behind the cafe. Near the closed back door, they found a window through which they could see the entire length of the big room. Toto indicated young Dr. Hubbard seated at his usual table near the window. I see him, Toto. He doesn't look alert and deadly. Uh, he's different than last time we see him. The doctor, referred to by townsmen as the Sarsaparilla Kid sat with his elbows on the table and his head resting on his hands. The news about John Thorpe had given him much to consider. I'd like to talk to him, Tonto, but I don't care to enter the cafe wearing a mask. Me go get him? Yes, ask him to come here with you. Uh, You'd better use the front door. Uh. While Tonto walked along the side of the building toward the street, a dozen boisterous men entered the cafe. They were the Boxo Cowboys, led by Lightning Joe Crane. Come on, make way for the Boxo. You men at the bar, step back and make room. Get busy, barkeep. We've been two months on the range. Hey, Joe, let's find a table where we can sit down and relax. Good idea, Brazos. Yeah, see a table in the rear, only one man sitting. We'll make him move. Come on. One man's got no right to hold down a table. That's right, Brazos. Especially when Lightning Joe Crane wants to sit down. <laughs> hey, that hombre looks like an Easter. Yeah, tenderfoot. Might have some fun with him, huh? <laughs> hey, look what he's drinking. What? Well, I'll be cow kid. An Easterner with two guns and a bottle of sarsaparilla. <laughs> Look here, you pop-drinking pilgrim. You... Are you speaking to me? Yeah. You know who I am? No, and I'm not interested. I'm Lightning Joe Crane. Lightning, savvy. I've plugged half a dozen hombres in my time. I'll take your word for it. Well, now, no one who drinks sarsaparilla has any business packing two guns. Look, now, you better hand them over to me before you shoot yourself. <laughs> I'll stand so my guns are level with yours. <laughs> if you want them, try to take them. Oh, big talk for a four-flusher, huh? I don't like to be called names. Hey. Lightning Joe staggered back from the unexpected blow to his chin. He reached for a gun and shouted, I'll kill you for that! 
The doctor, firing from the hip, smashed Lightning Joe's half-drawn weapon. Then, with his other gun, covered Brazos. Freeze, mister. I don't shoot. Reach for a gun and you'll get the same as your pal. My hands are up. Come on, boys. He's asking for trouble. The box old men hesitated when Dr. Hubbard waved his threatening gun. You men, stay back. Get him, boys. I'll shoot the first man who takes a step or draws a gun. Then someone threw a bottle. Take this. Hubbard dodged. His guns wavered. In that split second, Lightning Joe leaped at him. I've got him. I'm holding his arm so he can't shoot. Struggling to break away from Lightning Joe's bear-like grip, Dr. Hubbard dropped his guns. Lightning shouted, Hit him, Brazos! Use your gun as a club. Right, I'll crack your skull. As Brazos lifted his weapon overhead, a gun barked. Brazos' gun flew out of his hand from the impact of a bullet fired by a masked man who had suddenly entered the back door. Holding two guns, he said, Stand back, you men, all of you. He smashed! He smashed my gun! I said, all of you, stand back. Tonto, who had hurried from the front door, jabbed his gun into Lightning Joe's side. No! Get back! All right, all right. Doctor, you pick up guns. I've got them. Me got your horse behind building. You go out back door. But who are you? You come. We're friends, Hubbard. We're trying to get you out of here alive. I'll get the three of you for this. Don't anyone move. I don't understand who you are. This is no time for questions. Go with Toto. Your horse is right here. There'll be a bullet for anyone who tries to follow us. Easy, 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 easy
Buffalo to continue. Meanwhile, most of the Boxo cowhands had left the Red Dog and returned to their camp. A few townsmen remained in the cafe. Also, Lightning Joe Crane and his friend Brazos. The two sat at a table examining guns they'd borrowed from a couple of the ranch hands. It makes me sore when I think of my favorite gun being smashed. Yeah, we'll both have to buy new ones, Joe. Masked man's bullet smashed mine. I'd like to put a bullet through his head. And that goes double for that sarsaparilla drink in Easton. You don't dare shoot him, Joe. Why not? Everyone knows what happened here tonight. If the Easterners killed, you'll be the first one suspected. Yeah. But just the same, I'm going to get square with him somehow. Wish I knew where to find him. Yeah, maybe the barkeeper knows where he's staying. Yeah. Or maybe the old sweeper over there knows. I'll ask him. Hey, Whiskers. Uh, speaking to me? Yeah, come here a minute. Yes, sir? You're always around. You probably hear a lot of talk. You know where we'll find the sarsaparilla kid. <clears throat> he's been living at the hotel. Thanks. There's something else I might tell you. What? I said I, I, I might tell you. Sort of depends. And do you want money? What I know should be worth about five dollars. All right, here. Here's five dollars. And you better give me my money's worth. Hey, you might find the sarsaparilla kid with Brother John. Brother John? Yep, he's back in these parts. Yeah, I know, I know. But what makes you think the sarsaparilla kid's with him? I'll tell you all I know. For several days, the kid's been sitting here in the cafe like he was waiting to gun someone. He kept asking if anyone had seen a cattleman named John Thorpe. I figured Thorpe as being the gent the kid wanted to gun. Never heard of John Thorpe. Not many folks remember him. But I do. And just before you came here tonight, I told the kid that John Thorpe had quit ranching ten years ago and started preaching. Now he's known as Brother John. Yeah? Do you think the kid plans to shoot Brother John? Uh, I've told you all I know. Hope you got your money's worth. Yes, sir. <laughs> and here, here's five dollars more. That's so you forget you talk to me. Thanks. I'll keep your mouth shut. Yes, sir. E. I sure will. I will. Sarsaparilla kid's not the only one who'd like to shoot Brother John. Uh, you've got a score to settle with him, Joe, for the way he threw you out of his revival tent last year. I haven't year. forgotten that. I'd like to get... Brazos. I know how to square things with both the preacher and the kid. How? Catch them together, shoot them both. Then leave things so it'd look like they shot each other. Uh, I don't know. Now look, after the shooting, the sweep would be sure to tell the sheriff what he knows about the kid. Maybe he's already done so. Yeah? And that'll settle it. It'll be assumed that the preacher shot the kid in self-defense. Yeah, I reckon you're right. But, uh, I need your help, Razos. You can count on me, Joe. I'll always stick with you. Good. There's, uh, just one thing. What's that? I'm wondering about the Indian and the masked man. We've got a score to settle with them, too. And we'll settle it someday. Hey, but the Sarsaparilla kid rode away with him. Maybe he won't go to the revival tent. That's a chance we'll have to take. We'll go there and watch for him. If he doesn't show up, there'll be nothing lost. But if he does, <laughs> I'll pay off two debts. Come on, let's go. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dr. Hubbard, alias the Sarsaparilla Kid, accompanied by the Lone Ranger and Tonto, grew rain and dismounted a short distance from the big revival tent on the outskirts of Trail City. The Lone Ranger glanced at the lighted tent, which glowed in the darkness, then drew from his belt the guns he'd taken from the doctor. He handed them to Tonto, saying, Put these into one of the doctor's saddlebags, Tonto. Ah, me do it. Let me put them into my holsters. I'll not use them. Do you think Brother John will be wearing a pair of guns? It's hardly likely. Then why should you? All right, have it your way. We go to tent now? Yes, Toto. Oh, you see shattered girl and wall tent. Must be Jane. She's John Thorpe's daughter. Shall I, I go in first? Yes, go ahead, Doctor. I don't know. I'll be right behind you. We're not ready for the meeting. Where is Brother John? He's in our living quarters beyond the partition at the other end of the tent. You don't remember me, do you, Jane? Remember you? No, I... That man behind you... Please don't be alarmed because of my mask. Todd and I are friends of Dr. Hubbard. Dr. Hubbard? Jim Hubbard? Yes, Jane. It's been ten years since we saw each other. Ten years since you swore to kill my father. 
And now you're here with a masked gunman and a savage Indian to carry out your vow. No, Miss Thorpe. Don't I... lie to me. Father and I know about you, Jim. We've heard about the way you practiced every day with your guns. And we know why you did it. Jane, I admit I swore to avenge my dad and came from the East for that purpose. But when I got here, I... I learned that your father had become a preacher. So you brought a masked gunman to do your killing for you. That's not true. I'll tell you why my father became a preacher. It was because he so bitterly repented the mistake he made. The mistake that that made you an orphan. He sold his ranch, his cattle, everything he owned. And he gave part of the money to charity. The rest he turned over to a lawyer in the East. A lawyer named Hawks. Hawks? The man who adopted me? Yes. Did you really believe he was a friend of your father? Well, that's what you were supposed to think. But actually, he was my dad's agent to raise you, to give you an education. I didn't know that. He kept dad advised. We knew how well you did in school and how you were constantly practicing with guns. Jane, please believe me. I'm sorry. Oh, dad. Who are these men? This is James Hubbard, Dr. Hubbard. Well, Jim, I'm glad to see you. I... Mr. Thorpe, Brother John, I'm glad to see you. I've so much to say to you. Are these men your friends? Yeah, yes, this is Tonto, and I don't know the masked man's name. I'm glad to meet you, Brother John. He and Tonto saved my life. Then I'm glad to know you. You've done good work. So have you. Jane told me what you've done for me. I didn't even suspect that you'd spent all your money and... I didn't do it for you, Jim. I did it for myself. Ten years ago, I made a hideous mistake. I hoped that by doing my best to make retribution, I... I might earn forgiveness, but... While Brother John talked to Dr. Hubbard, Lightning Joe Crane and Brazos rode out of town and through the darkness until they saw the big tent. Rain in, Brazos. Ho, 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 there, ho, there. ho. You better leave the horses right here. The two men walked closer to the tent. Then Brazos stopped, drew his gun, and waited while he watched Lightning Joe move soundlessly close to the side wall of the big tent. He saw the gunman lie flat on the ground and cautiously lift the canvas far enough to peer beneath it. Then he saw Joe gesture with one hand and hurried forward. Joe spoke in a whisper. Brazos, we've got better luck than we even dreamed of. Yeah, how's that? The kid's in there. Yeah? And who do you think's with him? It's that engine and the mask man. Now, the kid's not wearing guns. His holsters are empty. And Brother John's not armed. That leaves only the mask man and engine. And we'll have the drop on them both before they know what's happening. Come on. Inside the tent, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were gratified to see Brother John and Dr. Hubbard shake hands. Jim, you've no idea how I've hoped and prayed for this day. I'm glad it worked out this Ice way. Ice your hands, uh, Ollie. You keep them high. Do as they say, Tonto. Brazos, Lightning Joe. If anyone makes a move, I'll shoot the girl. Now, this is luck, Joe. We'll get square with the masked man and the engine as well as the others. Our night for revenge. Put down those guns. I threw you out of this tent a year ago. Yeah, and I'm here to get square. Shoot any one of us and you both hang. Not a chance. Everyone in town will think the Sarsaparilla kid did the shooting. With the help of his pal. Who? You. I haven't a gun. You will have when they find your body. It'll be the gun that shot that preacher and his daughter. You two think you'll get away with the murder of all five of us? Yeah. And we'll start with the men who wear guns. You and your engine pal. Razos, you drill the Indian, and I'll take the mask, man. Right. Well, you scoops! Hey, at them! There was an explosion of action when Joe and Brazos tightened their trigger fingers. In that instant, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, gambling with their lives, ducked low and charged. And in the same instant, Brother John rushed forward. The first shots went wild, but Joe and Brazos still held their guns and struggled for the chance to use them. The young doctor joined the fight. Hang on to his gun hand. I'll do the rest. I'll kill you! You don't hang... Have time. My wrist. Drop the gun or I'll break it. Brazos dropped his gun, but Lightning Joe fired once more. The preacher staggered back and fell as Tuttle finished the fight with a hard blow to Joe's jaw. Good work, Tuttle. Uh, Me knock one out. I've dropped my gun. Don't shoot. On your feet, Brazos. You're through. My father's been shot. He's unconscious. Give me a gun. I'll kill those crooks. You're no gunman, Hubbard. Your work as a doctor while Todd and I tie these would-be murderers. My surgical kit is in one of my saddlebags. Oh, okay. It was
was about half an hour later when the doctor finished work on the wounded preacher and looked up. He saw Brazos and Lightning Joe seated on the ground, tightly bound, and guarded by the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Jane, who had been kneeling in prayer, lifted her head when she heard... How about it, Doctor? Brother John will live. Thank heaven. And thank you, Jim. Dr. Hubbard. It was a difficult operation, well performed. You're the kind of doctor who's needed in the West. This is my country. I belong here. Here are your guns. I'll not need them anymore. Only to help Toto guard these prisoners until the sheriff takes over. Well, that's right. Are you sure my father will be all right? Yes, Jane. He should regain consciousness very soon. The sheriff will be here soon. Good. Uh, me, wait. Adios. Goodbye. Tonto, we're all mighty indebted to you and to your masked friend. Oh, we glad to help. Jim, who is the masked man? Jane, in his way, he's a combination of doctor, preacher, and lawman. He fights to save men's lives, their souls, and their human rights. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll kill the This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 